Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guy video on the first look of the Casio FX CG50 graphic calculator. The CG50 is a brand new calculator from Casio which includes not only graphical features but also some of the features that are common amongst the scientific calculators that they produce. The style of the calculator appears to be very similar to that of the ClassWiz. It seems to have this patterned uh, finish and uh, silver effect buttons on some of the key buttons at the top and the white finish on the lower keys and the blue finish on the AC and delete key. So very similar to the ClassWiz except it has a broader screen and also can display in full colour and has a lot more features as well. Now let's have a look at the emulator. I've only got the emulator of uh, the calculator at the moment. I don't actually have a model of the calculator. It's not yet available in the UK, but I'm hoping it will be soon. And when I receive that through, I shall be doing an unboxing video to see what it looks like straight out of the box. Well, let's just have a look at some of the available menus. I'm not going to go through all of the features here. I'm just going to have a little overview of what's available on the CG50. The first thing that we have on here is run matrix mode, which is kind of the standard mode for doing all of your calculations in. You can see that we have a facility here to input matrices here. If we, uh, if we press math, there's also a lot of other facilities available. So we've got logarithms, the absolute function, differential and second differential, integral and a sum feature. Uh, so that's quite a lot of features as well as being able to include all the other standard features like um, the four functions, squareds, fractions and that sort of thing. We'll return to the menu, there's a statistics mode which operates very similar to uh, the statistics modes on the scientific calculator. You have one variable, or you can have two variables and make a comparison. Also we've got another mode here, e-activity, which appears to be something where you can engage a class as a whole, so maybe the teacher can project a certain activity on the board and the class can participate with their CG50s along with that. There's a spreadsheet function, again similar to the class whiz. And here we have the graph function, so let's go in and have a look at this. Now I've already inputted a graph in here, so x minus 3 brackets, x plus 2 in brackets. We're going to have a go at drawing this particular graph. Some of you may recognise it's a quadratic equation. So here we have a quadratic graph and we have the nice U-shaped curve being produced. Now what I actually did prior to the video is to just do the auto zoom so that it was all scaled all nicely. So I'll just repeat uh, what I did for that. If you go to F2 and press auto then it will automatically calibrate the display so that you can display as much of the graph on your screen as possible including the key features where it can uh, particularly the roots and if possible the turning point as well you can use f1 trace to be able to trace uh, along the graph so you've got steps of 0.1 on the x and it will tell you the corresponding y value you can also alter the scale uh, manually by having a look at uh, v window you can sort of put your own scales in there you can display a tangent and a normal i'm just going to put up the tangent on here it's not 100 percent clear but it should be the tangent to the point where i've got the cursor on the graph Let's have a look at some of the features we can solve from the graph. Well, we can get the solutions to the two roots of the equations, so negative 2 and 3. So let's go back and have a look what's available. Well, we have a regular x squared graph, so it's going to be a minimum point. So we can generate the minimum point, which is this x is 0.5 y equals negative 6.25, so that's the minimum point on the graph. There's also the y-intercept, which I think we did when we did the trace, we detected that was 0 uh, minus 6 on there. Now what I'm going to do now is to do an integral between the two roots of the equation. So I'm going to see what area is actually beneath the x-axis. Let's just press equals to say that our first value is the first root, so minus two, and the second value is going to be the second root, so three. And here it's integrated it for us to find the area. Uh, it's shaded it in, that's the area under the x-axis there. So it looks like um, 20.83 recurring would be the area um, that is below the x-axis there. We also have a dynamic graph feature. I'm not quite sure what's involved with that just yet, so I will investigate in the future. And table mode, which I imagine operates similar to table mode on scientific calculators. There's also a, rec a recursion mode. 
Let's scroll down and have a look at conic graphs. Uh, so uh, this is a feature to be able to look at all different conic graphs. We can see a few displayed here. And if we scroll down, then we should also be able to deal with uh, graphs of a circle as well. And it appears that we can input both with rectangular coordinates, polar coordinates, and parametrically as well. Uh, so that's quite useful. Then there's an equation mode. Uh, well, there's a simultaneous solver, a polynomial solver, and a general solver uh, within that. So they would be quite useful to be able to solve for numerical values of x, etc. There's a program function, so I presume you can design and download programs that can be incorporated into the CG50. And there's also a finance mode. It looks like here you can calculate simple interest and compound interest. Uh, let's just have a look at F5, conversion. Uh, so it appears here that what you can do is uh, input your uh, initial value, so your starting value, and your exchange rate, perhaps, so you can convert between different currencies. Okay, so then we've got a row of features which appear to be about working with the hardware and software of the CG50. I think that the two ones there, the Econ4 and the Link, are to do with connecting it to the computer and the internet connectivity. Uh, memory, I imagine, is things that are stored on the Casio and system would be your setup menus. Uh, for operating the CG50. And then we have some extra features uh, down here. Uh, I believe these are additional downloads that are available on the physical model of the CG50. Let's go into 3D graph. Well, I'm going to have a go at inputting a sphere in here so we can get that displayed. I'm just going to input A, B, C as zero. So it should have the center being the origin. And I'm going to input a, a radius of three. Press equals, and then if I press equals again, we should go back to the original screen, the input screen, and then if we could press F6, then it will draw. And it's just taking a moment to do that. And here we go, here we have our sphere, and we can rotate around using the navigation key uh, to look at it at different angles. I presume there's calculations and features that you can read off at that sphere uh, that I won't do at this time. Let's return to the menu um, and have a look at uh, one more feature that I was quite impressed with, and that is this Physium, uh, which I presume is an extra download as well. Uh, so in here, well, firstly, our first option is that we can actually have a look at the periodic table. So there we have the periodic table, and there's various different things that we can do. We can navigate around and have a look at the different elements that are included in that. You can see we have different colored fonts for um, solids, gases, and liquids. And if we press F6 for further detail, then we'll get a little information screen about the selected element, so in this case, carbon. We can also zoom in. It's obviously quite a small screen there to cram all of the periodic table in, so we can zoom in to have a look at a particular uh, section of it at one time. Um, also, we can find particular sets in there. Um, so let's have a look, have a look at N gas, so the noble gases, and we can see them highlighted on the right hand side of the screen there. And again, if we choose to, we can zoom in on that and have a look at some of the noble gases that we've got there, neon, etc. Okay, so that, that's quite a, a good feature and quite useful if you are studying science. Also, let's just return to the other thing in the physium, and that is that there is some uh, universal constants. Uh, so again, very useful if you're studying physics. Uh, you can have some of the universal constants there. I think we've got the speed of light at the top and various others. Um, so yes, and it's also very similar to on the class quiz, there is the preloaded physical constants in there, uh, which would be very useful if you're requiring them for any uh, scientific equations. So there we go, a very brief first look at the Casio CG50. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting this model when it is released in the UK. I believe it currently retails at around $99 in areas where it is available. Um, I'm expecting it to be sort of plus £100 uh, when it comes out in the UK. And that would make it in line with the other uh, CG models, the other colour graphical models that Casio have uh, previously produced, such as the CG20. Well, there we go, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time on The Calculator Guide.